Hi everyone, welcome to Museum on Tap Happy Hour presented by the Cincinnati Museum Center. I'm Jessica Urban and today I'm having a drink with Phil Armstrong, artist, photographer, and managing editor of Cincinnati Refined. Welcome to Happy Hour, Phil. Thank you for having me. So I know you've got uh, some really cool stories to share with us today about your work around Cincinnati, but before we get started, why don't you share a little bit about yourself uh, with our friends watching at home? Sure, uh, well, like you said, um, I am a photographer and an artist and I manage Cincinnati Refined uh, with a handful of, of great people. Um, I live downtown. Um, I love being outside as much as I can, uh, which is particularly troublesome right now because we're supposed to keep our distance and stay home. Um, but uh, for the most part, we've, we've been able to get out and enjoy the city still. And um, yeah, I just uh, enjoy, you know, being out and about. Um, so hoping to get back to that 100% uh, soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Cincinnati has a really rich history and there are lots of things to explore. As a photographer who enjoys exploring in history, do you feel like Cincinnati just has endless subject matter to inspire you? I certainly find things every month that I didn't know about before or discover new things that um, I can't believe I haven't run across in previous years. So. Um, it, from my perspective, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really interesting content uh, scattered throughout Cincinnati that I'm only scratching the surface of, and that's kind of the fun of it. You sort of uh, learn as you go, and, and you discover all these new things and new stories, and I think that's partially why I, I like being out so, so much, because I don't know it all, and I want to no more. So um, it's it's fun to to sort of come across these things and other photographers and other um, amateur historians and proper historians like have have enlightened me um, uh, about things around around town. So um, I certainly like to go out there and explore uh, when I get a tip about this cool thing in this neighborhood or that old thing in that neighborhood um, and. <clears throat> And also just keeping your eyes open while you're out and about yourself. Like, um, I'm just sort of getting into Northern Kentucky now, just trying to explore more of that. And um, that has just opened a whole new layer of living here in terms of things I didn't know about before or haven't run across yet. So that's been really, really fun too. Um, so yeah, and the short answer, yeah, I think there are endless things to discover here. and. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to it all in one life lifetime, but that's the fun of it. So, uh, I know in your role as editor, you probably get behind the scenes access to a lot of different places or events around Cincinnati, and it gives you kind of a unique perspective. Is there a favorite place you've gotten to go or an event you've gotten to be at something that's really stuck with you? There's a few things. I've been doing this job now for four years. Um, so in that four years, a lot can change. Um, so uh, 2016, uh, my first official gig with Refined was covering the last of the Luminosity series, um, which was neat because you got to see Taft all prettied up uh, with all the um, projections and what whatnot. But um, over the course of that four years, um, I think, well, seeing the Cincinnati subway was really a highlight. That that's a that's a tent pole in in my time with Refine because um, I didn't break in. I got permission from the city, and we were escorted down down there. And I got some really um, uh, nice shots of of the subway itself, um, which I didn't expect to ever see uh, as the guy who doesn't break into things because <laughs> I don't want to. Um, I, that was a really, really uh, neat, neat thing to see. Um, and uh, particularly challenging because I had to bring my own light down down there too because it's absolutely pitch black. Um, aside from the, the access that we went down, um, beyond that, like a small circle of light, it was just pitch black. So um, I brought, brought a flashlight and, um, and used that to help light the, the uh, scene. And um, along those lines, like being able to go down 
in the sub basement of Christian Moore line up on um, Henry Street, I believe it is. Um, and, and I mean, I, I'd been down there before, but like being able to photograph that properly was really nice. Um, and then there's a there's an underground um, sub basement below a building on Race Street that used to be the old Link Brewery, and that was really great too to see that because I don't I don't know when I would see that. So that was really nice. And then um, just being able to see um, Jacob Moraline's old house on Mul Mulberry Street that's all boarded up, and um, the port had that up for sale. I guess this was two years ago. Um, so I, so they took took me in and I took some shots for, for Refined and um, that was really cool to see kind, kind of where this like iconic fig, figure in our past used to live at some point, um, way, way, way back when. So, um, and then beyond just downtown, um, the Peters Cartridge Factory out in Mason, um, I shot that. Um, before they started doing construction on the whole thing. Um, once again, got access on that, so I didn't break in. Um, and that was really cool to see that old place because that's a very unique space, um, totally unlike anything down here. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Um, and then just um, the random mansions that I've been able to see in Clifton and what whatnot. Um, I shot um, the old uh, Henry Probasco house in Clif Clifton. The owners graciously let me in there to photograph their home and that was really neat. Um, just because that's not a, a board, board, boarded up uh, relic of the past that's not used. Like that's in an actual home where somebody lives which is nice. And they've got kids too so it was nice to see like a family of I think four living in this place and like actively using it. Um, and uh, the Rawson House in Cliff, Clifton, that was neat. Uh, the Weedman Hill Mansion in North, Northern Kentucky and Newport, uh, that was really cool. Um, just sort of these old historic spots um, really interest me. So being able to go in there and like adequately capture them is just a real treat. Yeah. But I think, I think honestly the most gorgeous space I've seen is the Plum Street Temple on Plum Plum Street, Plum and 8th, 8th and Plum Street, like Caddy Corner to City Hall. I, like, I, I can't, I can't really put it into words what I felt when I walked in there, but uh, the first time you see that room, it's just, it's unreal. It is so colorful and the light coming in the uh, top windows and it's completely empty and it was just oh man it was really really neat uh, so we have pictures of that on the site as well um, so that as sometimes I'll just go back and look at those pictures again and like recall how I felt because it was just so neat to to um to walk walk in there and see all that yeah so. what a cool part of your job to be able to go in and see those places that you know, a lot of us can only look at from the sidewalk and think what's in there. <laughs> uh, Cincinnati has obviously a lot of um, special events that are pretty unique just to our city. I'm thinking of things like you said, Luminosity or Blink. Um, mm -hmm. What is something that's really fun about shooting something like Blink and what makes it really difficult? Um, what makes it difficult is just how spread out it it is, and it really can't get going until it gets dark. So um, Blink is great because there's so many um, installations from um, the, the northern reaches of o for the Rhine down to, well, now Covington. Um, so um, really strategizing which, which section of Blink you're going to shoot uh, each of the four or nice is key. So this last time, um, I shot Covington first. And um, <clears throat> I'm glad I did because uh, they closed down the bridge one night um, at some point because too many people were on the bridge. Wow. And that first night after the parade ended, um, everybody sort of collectively went on to the road wing bridge, but they didn't go on the sides. They went down the middle, which typically people don't do. And um, I remember my wife and I were going to go meet friends in Covington. 
So um, after we got to the mouth of the Rogue Wing Bridge, we're like, well, let's just go down the middle because that seems like what everybody else is doing and we don't get to walk on, on that part. So we started to, and uh, just the sea of heads that you could see the entire length of the arch of the bridge was just insane. And I raised my camera up and I took a quick shot. Um, and I'm so glad I did because immediately after that, uh, the cops came in and they're like, get off the bridge. So they forced us all off the bridge um, because they knew like, this isn't, this isn't going to hold <laughs> with this many people on the actual bridge. Um, so they moved them all off and then we went down, down the side and um, I'm so glad we did because uh, as we're going down the side, uh, I hadn't had a drop to drink all night, but I felt drunk because the bridge was moving so much that I couldn't like keep my balance, um, which was, which I've never, I've never felt an earth earthquake or uh, been in a situation where the ground below me is moving that much. Um, and it was, you know, you're over the river, you're up high, <laughs> you're in the dark. It's like kind of, um, was, was, strange and weird and um as soon as we got to the other side i'm like i'm gonna wait until the end of the night to cross this thing again because i'm just gonna let let it clear off and hopefully um my return trip isn't as treacherous as the uh, <laughs> trip to um and, and it was fine coming back but um that was just the difficulty of of trying to capture it all across those four four nights is um the real challenge for me because i want to um, see it all and I want to not just like go in and take a picture and then bail like I actually want to be in it and like be there in the moment so it's if you spend a bit um, of time in each spot like you really do need like all four four days uh, and I think one of those days it rained so we didn't really get to see that much and then another day I think think it got started late because of lightning out uh, west um, that was too close. So um, we really got less than four days, which was um, uh, not ideal, but we still got around two, two, two at all. And that was, was really fun. Um, so uh, that, but that's blank. So um, yeah. yeah. You've gotten um, to do something kind of special, I know lately, which is photographing uh, graduations that are happening. Mm -hmm outdoors and in this you know really strange time we're all in and I have to give a shout out to Taft High School that actually used Museum yeah. Center's driveway the driveway at Union Terminal for their graduation that was awesome um yeah how has that been just getting to photograph something that's kind of this once in the lifetime moment it is I'm I'm super pri priv privileged to be able to do it um I'm doing 17 of them uh, I've got two more tonight. Uh, I, I did two last last night. The I think the Taft High School one at the museum was the best one, and I'm not just saying that, but it was the best best one because there was so much space for the cars to queue up the drive, and um, and because it was so spread out, um, just being able to see the line of cars with the kids and they hang out the side of the car or if there's a sun roof they're on top of the car or if it's a truck they're in the back bed and uh just being able to see them enjoy this i guess it's a, a amended version of what most people get um just seeing them like legit enjoy it is so rewarding because uh, you go back through those pictures at the end of the night and like everybody's just like big grins and they're reaching down for their diplomas and and they just like some kids are like crying because they're like overcome with with emotion and and um i think it's actually a really cool way to graduate because like all your friends and family are in the car with uh, you they're not up like a thousand feet in bleachers like they're actually there with with you so i feel like it's a bit more of an intimate way to graduate and um, I kind of wish that I had this um, back when I grad graduated because I feel like it's, it's a lot more fun. Um, but again, like I, 
that's coming from a person who had the traditional way. And I think if maybe I were 18 and graduating now, maybe I would feel diff diff uh, differently, but uh, it's, it's, it's been very fun to shoot, shoot those just because uh, everybody's just having such a good time. And, um, and I don't know if we're ever going to have this again. Like, I don't know if next year they're going to go back to just stage and calling out names or if in the future we're going to have these drive, drive through graduations again. But um, uh, the weather for the most part has held out. Uh, the first two days were very wet uh, and not very fun. Um, but you bag up your stuff and you, you wear a rain, raincoat and do your best. And then yeah. uh, now it's just the heat. Like, of course, as you know, it's, it's, it went straight from October <laughs> to July in the yeah. course of a few, few days. So, um, but I would much rather do it in the heat than in the rain. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been super fun. And, um, uh, we've got today, uh, let's see, today's Wednesday, we've got Thursday, Friday, and then s Saturday we conclude with, I think, Walnut Hills. So. What a cool yeah. thing to be a part of. What a special moment. Yes. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, if people who are watching at home want to know more about your photography or about your art, where can they find you? Um, my website is uh, philarmstrongart.com. That's A-R-T dot com. Um, I'm also on Instagram. I'm uh, at cincy, C-I-N-C-Y, -C Phil, P-H-I-L. Uh, and those are pretty much the two best, best, best ways to see me. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for sharing your stories. It was really, really cool to hear about all the amazing places and the things you've gotten to photograph. Thank you to everybody who's watching at home, and we will see you next time for happy hour. Cheers, everyone. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Bye. Thanks.